With Melodyne, you can reach every individual note, even when they were all recorded together, like here. With this string quartet recorded using several microphones, all captured on a single track. Melodyne can identify the individual notes in this stereo signal, but to do so, it has to decide which frequencies belong to which note. This is a tricky question. Is a particular sound component a note that was actually played? Or is it just an overtone that belongs to some other note? And if so, to which one? Purely technical criteria cannot always provide an answer. Therefore, it's a good thing that you can give your knowledge to Melodyne and improve the process. In note assignment mode, there are two forms of representation. One for the notes actually played, for instance, the ones that can be altered in normal edit mode. And silhouettes for overtones that Melodyne has decided, perhaps only narrowly, not to assign the status of actual notes. Silhouettes then represent potential notes that you can turn into actual notes with the activation tool, or vice versa. This is how you overrule Melodyne's decisions regarding which are fundamentals and which are mere overtones. The frequency spectrum contains, however, many other overtones that Melodyne is not showing because it's pretty sure they are just that, and not fundamentals. To see these two represented as silhouettes, move the parenthesis to the right. And energy shadows like this indicate the presence of further overtones. By clicking, you can turn them into notes. With a ball-shaped slider, you fill in an increasing number of silhouettes. And with the Venetian blinds, you limit the area within which Melodyne searches for notes. Everything hidden by the blinds will then be regarded as an overtone. The point of doing all this is to ensure that later, when you've left note assignment mode, the desired notes are available for editing. Wrong decisions in note assignment mode have consequences. And to illustrate what can go wrong, I have constructed an example. Here in the strings, you can hear two separate notes, but only C1. The interval heard can only be moved en bloc. You cannot access the individual notes. This is obviously undesirable. Such errors are in practice rare, but it's good to know you can correct them. Like this. Select one note of the track affected and switch to note assignment mode. You'll hear the original recording and must decide whether what you are hearing corresponds with what you see. Where the two-part harmony appears, you have to create another note. Out of one of these silhouettes, but which? To simplify the decision, reduce first of all the number of silhouettes on offer. If there are still too many possibilities, the numbers representing the harmonic series could help. Move the mouse over the low note in the cello. One of the silhouettes still showing falls outside the harmonic series of the selected note and cannot therefore be one of its overtones. It must be the note we're looking for. An acoustic aid is also available. From the inspector, switch the synthesizer on. This only plays the blobs, not the silhouettes. When, as here, none of the upper silhouettes has been activated, the synth plays only the one cello blob. Switch now the original playback. There you can hear clearly that the viola is playing a different note. Now activate the silhouette that we've already decided was the most likely candidate and compare the synthesizer with the original recording. You can hear the same harmonic interval in both. The display is therefore correct. It gets trickier when, as here, an overtone coincides with a note that was actually played. This one, for instance. Now Melodyne must apportion the available energy fairly between the two notes. Because if, for example, you were to move the lower note, its overtone would have to move with it. With the Energy Share tool, you can influence the apportionment. A value of 1 is the starting value, corresponding to Melodyne's assessment of the respective shares of the two notes, which is in all probability correct. You can increase this to a maximum value of 2, apportioning an increasingly large share of the existing energy to that note, or reduce it to 0, increasing the share of the other note in question. The signals will then be reinterpreted, and the relative size of the two blobs changed accordingly.